Okay, so hopefully now we'll be able to just finish off our first model. Um, I'm going to go back into creating some modeling again. So all this high, you know, high quality setting lighting and stuff, we don't want that on all the time because it's hard to work with when we're just doing modeling. So where we changed it to high quality, get that back to standard and get your edged faces back on again. Okay, if you want as well to, if these get in your way a bit, um, where you can see your lights here in the sort of list of objects. So Omni, you can turn that off with the eyeball uh, and the skylight, turn them off so that they're not in the way. Right, so last things we want to make is this kind of satellite dish thing, uh, probably finishing off the stairs and then the other bits of detailing. Okay, so we'll start with this dish. So what we're going to do, go back to our standard primitives again. I'm going to make a sphere. Um, Auto grid can stay on because it's going to be up here somewhere. That's going to be about that big. Um, you can see from before, I've already um, got a hemisphere at 0.5. Get that back to zero because yours might be that when you create yours. Um, so I want to play around with some of these settings because I need it fairly smooth. It needs to be fairly rounded. Put that about 30. Hemisphere though, we are going to have 0.5 because we only need half a sphere. Um, so that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So now we need to go into editing. So I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. I am going to rotate it into place. I know that it's flat on the front at the moment, but we are going to fix that. Um, Probably wants to be about there. Let's look in my top view. Yeah. About, about there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is going to go to Polygon. And this might be a bit tricky, but I need to select all of these to delete them. So you can do it bit by bit if you want. Remember, don't push backspace. <laughs> push delete. Backspace won't work. Also, when you're selecting multiple things like this, be really careful because if you click and drag, you're going to get things starting to go wrong. Okay, so you need to make sure you're just clicking, not dragging. Okay, if you're worried and you keep moving things around, um, just use the selection tool over there rather than you know having the move tool on. Um, there we go. Get rid of all those. Delete. Right. But the problem is, this now has no actual like depth to it. It's just like paper thin, right? Which isn't what we want. So in order to add that add that depth, and you'll you'll see what that means in a minute, is we need to add something to this object, um, which is again something new. Uh, is from this modifier list. Now make sure you're not in polygon mode anymore. Make sure you're in editable poly, which is the um, the top layer and drop down modifier list. Okay, and you'll see there's tons and tons and tons of modifiers. If you want, you know, you could select a few different ones and see what they do. If you want, <laughs> some of them you might find um, a bit confusing though at first. So, what I'm going to add is this one called Shell. Okay, and instantly you can see actually that it's, it's added um, some depth to that. So it was so paper thin, now you can see it's actually got some depth to it. Um, that outer amount here, you can change that depending on what you want. But to be honest, about one. One was probably fine. And there you go. Again, there's lots of other things you can change here, but we don't need to worry about that. So we now have our dish, satellite dish. Um, change the color. It's not the right one. There. So it's also got this kind of post. It's just kind of going through the middle there, which is very similar to this one. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the one I made earlier. Remember to hold shift when you're copying something. I'm going to move it along. And this one, I don't want to instance it because I'm actually going to make changes to it, but I want it to be different to this one. So I'm just doing a copy. Okay, 
and I'm going to move it kind of into place where I would want it to be. Somewhere around here. You can always move it later. And okay, I'm going to go to my vertex. And if, let's see, I'm marquee selecting multiple vertices at once so I can get all the ones at the top and then move them down. Multiple ways you could do that. You could go to polygon, select that top polygon and move it down as well. But it's quite nice to work with in vertices because you get more flexibility. Um, okay, so I'm going to move that down a bit more. Move the whole thing down. Because again, because with vertices, I can then just select all of that and move that whole thing down. Whereas in Polygon, if I selected all of that, it selects this as well, which I don't want. Okay, again, that's something you get familiar with with practice. Um, move that down. That's probably about fine. And then maybe we'll round off the top of it by beveling. So bevel up like that. Lovely. Okay. So that looks about fine. I mean, mechanically, it doesn't always make sense with 3D modeling, okay? <laughs> Unless you're actually doing something for some engineering, but this is just something that's um, just visual. So, you know, technically in the real world, you wouldn't have this post just pushing through a dish like that. It wouldn't work. Um, but, you know, if you take a step back and look at this when the edge faces are off, um, you wouldn't necessarily think that and if you know if you saw this in a game and it had all its materials and textures on and no one's going to think twice about that all right so um you know i bet you didn't notice that when i first showed you this model for example so some things uh you can just kind of wing it a bit as long as it looks right then you're okay as long as the user isn't picking up on it then you're okay so that's the dish um the handle on the door we haven't done so I'm just gonna basically create that out of a box auto grid on and I'm just gonna draw it on the front like that again it doesn't need to be necessarily usable at the moment we could go into more detail but we're not gonna just something that represents a handle there that's absolutely fine um, this might be like a game or something where you can't use the door um, but you can go around the building um, so that's fine. Um, and then you've got the railings on the stairs, um, which is the last thing we'll do. So railing on the stairs, uh, the last new thing we're going to learn in the process of making this model. So next to um, our standard primitives and next to lights is these things called splines. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do is make, just debating whether we should go this far with this model, it does get a bit advanced, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'm going to use this line tool to make, uh, first of all, this little arch, and then we'll do that piece there. So to make that arch, uh, I'm going to make it down here first. So with the line, you can click once, click up, cross down and then right click when you're finished okay uh, we can go into modify same as before um, actually no I don't want to do that I want to rotate it uh, about 90 degrees that's fine and then so I can move that into place Out here and the arch needs to go across into the building and the whole thing needs to come up a bit okay that'll be about fine um, but obviously that's just a very thin line that's not really much use to us at the moment so we need to come into this section here called rendering and need to enable in renderer and enable in the viewport and you can see it has some depth to it now. That depth we can just change here. It's actually known as the thickness. So change it to about 
two. Does that work? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so you can see that's there. Um, and then again, same thing with what's coming off of here and going down to there. Um, so we can make that. Uh, I think it'd be the easiest way to do it. Probably just on the floor down here. Cross down. So it'll go across, down, down like that. I know that's completely in the wrong place, but we can rotate it. Uh, 90 that way. Going to need my side view here. Move it up to there. And you can see, obviously, that's not in place. So I'm going to need to use Etsy's. to put that into place where I need it. Kind of like that, I think. Okay, you can see why I was debating whether to do this as part of this video, because it's quite fiddly. It does take some time um, to get right. And that's after me having done it loads of times as well. Um, so there you go. Okay, I mean, it's not perfect, um, but it, it's fine for the purposes of this model. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, um, the lines at the end there may take you some time to get right. I understand that, but um, give it a go. See, what, see how you get on. I'm going to turn my lights back on. And I'm going to change it back to high quality. And again, I'm going to lose those edge faces so I can get a good view of how my models turned out. Yeah, nice. I think that dish maybe needs moving over. But I'm quite happy with that. Um, hopefully, you're happy with yours. If you want to come in and do any modifications, then absolutely, you know, go ahead. I might also do is just add in a plane um, just as like a floor um, just to make it look a bit more grounded wait for those shadows to come in nice okay and there you go I'm happy with that so again that's a model that you know it didn't take us too long to do um, but you've learned so much from from doing it hopefully so um, we basically use all of the sort of most common tools that you would use in 3d modeling so remember at the beginning we use the connect tool to add in um, extra edges to get the um, sort of space for adding in the detailing um, we used extrude um, to push in the area for the windows and the doors um, we use inset um, to go across and then extrude to go down um, when we're doing the ledge up here. So that was inset. We used bevel, um, which is a bit like extrude, but makes kind of a sloped bevel shape. Um, we even went as far as to using um, lines or what they're called, they're called splines um, to create this railing real quick as well. Um, so yeah. Um, if you've gotten stuck, yours has just turned into a big mess, don't worry about it. Um, it might take you even, you know, three, four, five attempts at making this model to actually get it right in the end. Um, if it does, don't worry about it, don't be disheartened about it. it. You know, the best way to get good at doing 3D is to just practice, 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 um, and it will all become very familiar to you and you'll be absolutely fine. All right, so good luck.